All right, back out in the garage, making more parts. So the question was, um, there's some Christmas decorations. I get those up. Uh, the question was, how do I measure and cut some of the tubes that have been going into the chassis? Uh, so I thought I'd do a video real quick about my process. I don't know if this is the correct process, but it's been working pretty well so far. So, you know, it's kind of hard. So I'm getting ready. Actually, here, I'll show you the parts I'm getting ready to cut right now. So there is a tube that's going to go right here. So basically uh, kind of in line to help take the load because uh, there's a steering rack that's going to mount over the top through right here. So the steering rack needs to mount to some stuff. And then there's going to be some load on that rack. So I want to make sure that load kind of gets um, spread throughout the chassis. So there's a tube that's going to go uh, right here. If I can get that shot uh, kind of here across these diagonal tubes up top. And I want that load to be able to be tied in directly to this frame rail and tied into things down here because there's going to be a triangulation bar that goes down there. Um, I've taken out on this side the same that's loose on this side. That's where all the front suspension mounts. So that all fills that hole. So anyway, I want this thing to be tied together. So there's a little tiny tube that's going to go right here. So the question is, is how do you measure and cut and install that tube right there? So like I could try to like figure out like with like a tape measure roughly what that distance is. Um, to get a little bit better idea, I've kind of developed this process using uh, these like Harbor Freight dirt cheap um, little calipers that they sell, these little measurement things. So I have a couple different ones. This is like for point to point. This would be for inside dimension IDs. This would be OD dimensions. Um, and they're super handy. So I'm trying to get the measurement between those two ID two, or I mean between these two tubes. So if I use this ID setup here, I can kind of like figure out roughly, sorry, bad camera work, uh, kind of figure out roughly uh, on this left side here um, where that the smallest dimension is, which is roughly right there, and kind of what that looks like. And, and as soon as I know that this, by you know adjusting the nut, as soon as I know that that's right, then I know then what the short leg needs to be on my measurement. All right, so now, now that we have this measurement, we come way over here to my tubing notcher setup, which I got this tubing notcher off of Zorro um, online and it was like dirt cheap and it's awesome. It's been super cool. Um, but anyway, so I just, you know, I have like, I'll scribe this, I don't know if you can see that, like a red line as kind of just like a guide all the way down one side of the tube, just set the tube flat on, you know, the floor or your work table or whatever and take a pen and just straight line all the way down the thing. So I use that red line as a guide. It always gets mated up to the same side here. I know I'm cutting the short side, so you can picture this is set to the correct angle. If I were to look down on a thing, it's going to cut across, right, as the tubing notcher goes in. So the, I'm measuring my short side here. So we know what my short side needs to be based off of the angle gauge. So I just kind of like scribe a, oops, Sorry, again, bad camera work. <laughs> just kind of scribe a, a Sharpie mark on there, roughly where my cut needs to be. Um, so it looks like I need to slide this tube maybe down, um, you know, to my left just a hair. And then I'm going to get that cut real quick, and then we'll see what it looks like when we go to slide it in. All right, be right back. All right, just finished cutting that little piece uh, so you can see our mark and where it was cut. So cut at that angle. Uh, and then uh, now it's time to clean it up. So this is straight off of the thing. You can see I've got my center distance off just a hair. I got a little fin of material there. I always like to uh, grind all of my tubes down um, and open that up just a little bit so that I, when you feed or when you actually go to weld things together, um, I'm not trying to weld to you know what is basically an ultra thin piece of steel right here. I want to be able to get into kind of the meat of the tube there so we can get a really good bond uh, between the two pieces of material. Uh, but so to do that, I'm going to grab the grinder and always take your take your guards off your grinders, right? Put it straight into death mode uh, because that will guarantee you're gonna be safe as possible because uh, you'll really be paying attention, uh, I feel like, when you have all the, all the guards off. So let me... And again, uh, you know, you wanna make sure that you're kind of holding it precariously uh, in your non-dominant hand, um, again, you know, it kind of kind of keeps you on your toes. All 
Okay, that's one side done. Let's flip around. Uh, don't wear gloves. That's important so that when you grab it, uh, it's going to be a little toasty. It's a little warm. Uh, so that's good. Again, you know, it's all about just making sure you're paying attention. Now, if you can see that, actually what I'm doing is I'm going through and just grinding off some of the uh, mill scale uh, to make sure that we're down to clean bare steel. Again, that's all for welding, just to make sure that we get a really good bond. A little bit more. Close enough. So here is the uh, kind of finished piece is cleaned up. Like I said, you know, I'll usually come back through and kind of like round over that edge just a little bit. Um, and you can see I ground down uh, the thinner areas just so that we have more material when we are welding to bond everything to. And then let's see if this fits. I'm guessing it's not too bad. So this is the narrow side. Um, you can still see a little bit of the red Sharpie that I used on there. Uh, I'm hoping that this will actually be a little bit too long because um, I usually try to, when I go to make the notch, cut it just a hair too long and then come back through and I can fine tune the cut with my angle grinder um, on the inside of this kind of like, usually the square side is the easier one. Uh, come back through and just grind away until it fits to how I like it. So let's see. So this is, yeah, just a hair long. Really close though. I have some weld that is sticking up right here from when I had my um, my front suspension mount points tacked in. I bet if I were to take that off, that would help. Grab a file real quick. And just take a good chunk of that down and see if that changes the fit. This actually has a top and bottom. There's a square sided cut that has to go against this tube, and then there's a notched cut that goes here um, that's at that 18 degree angle. Ooh, that is close. Hmm. That is really close. Again, it's sitting up on that. Is it? Yeah, it's sitting up on that weld. So, anyway. I'll, uh, I'll fix the fit and get it just in. Here, I'll grab the camera real quick. Get a little bit better shot here. So you can see kind of how far I'm off on that, uh, which isn't much. Like I said, I'll, I'll come back through and kind of fine tune the fit right there and slide it in until it lines up nice. And then I'll do that for the other side. And then there will be another tube that goes all the way across here. And that will give me two nice planes um, where I can make the mount for the front steering, um, that steering box that lives up here. So anyway, that's how I do that process. Uh, so once you learn how to do it, it goes pretty quick. It's not too bad. I try to get a couple done a night. Um, that's gotten me where we are right now with this pile. And then uh, I've got lots more tubes that need to get put in. Um, the thinner stuff actually has turned out to be a lot easier. Um, the smaller diameter tube, obviously just was less material. So I've got uh, kind of up front, or I mean, I guess back there, uh, some three quarter tube to kind of triangulate some things. Um, some of these bigger sections up here, all get triangulation tubes that go inside them. And then obviously uh, where some equipment needs to mount, there's a couple more tubes that need to get tacked in. So the frame is super close, super close. And then it's time to start working on upper and lower control arms and the rear mount for the rear suspension and an engine mount plate. And I've got to get an engine. Uh, a lot of work still to happen. A lot of work still to happen. For the glory, making it happen. All right, happy holidays, hugs and kisses. Talk to you later. Bye bye <laughs>